communication between the two of us. Um, we'll try to explain what we can and then at the end we open it up to Q&A. Yeah, because I have a whole list of questions. Right <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> my, my first thought was doing this was, um, oh no, it's the law program. They're going to start asking me like legal questions. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually, I've, I've actually researched the law. Um, oh, I've actually researched a lot of the law in the Netherlands and I I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my algorithm on Google playing tricks on me, but I can't find like a direct source for laws related to disabilities in the Netherlands. But from what, from what I can see, it's actually, um, it's actually um, based on one of the UN conventions they signed. And um, it's ba based on the constitution and the UN conventions, but I don't think they actually have like specific law related to disabilities here in the Netherlands. I mean, I have looked, so maybe I'm wrong on that. You know? but we're not going to talk about that. Maura. Hello. 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 Sorry, I was um, trying to check with the live stream. Oh. Um, so I had, um, um, just talking with Mr. Laurent, I had my friend, I call him, and he said that he will try to have the live stream on, but he doesn't know if it will be the same link mm. than the one you posted. So we'll okay. try. Yeah, we'll try. Yes. Okay. Um, so just for the purpose of the of the presentation, I'm going to share my screen. I hope you will have, you will be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure, but I think uh, Miss Montero wants to join. But I think she said she's on the train, so maybe send her a link and see if she wants to join. And Dr. Nindot will join as well for a few minutes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Perfect. We'll wait till two o'clock, I guess. Um, yeah, so uh, Miss Montero said she'd like to join. I don't suppose, could somebody send her an invite? Yeah. yeah, she's connecting. Up. One more minute.
All right, two o'clock, Dan, will we start? I think you can start. OK, cool. All right, so first I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today, particularly Mr. Dahl, uh, Ms. Tremley, Mr. LaRange, uh, Ms. Montero. I'm sorry if I left everyone out, anyone out there, because um, we would have to go through everyone. Um, my name is Paul Crosdell, and I'm here today with my colleague, Lara Filion. We are going to talk to you today about the disability network for the Hague University of Applied Sciences. And so without further ado, we'll dive straight into it. And our first topic of the day is, so what is the disability network? Well, the disability network has essentially three different layers. We have the student psychologists uh, and counsellors who we work closely with. In particular, there is Wilhelmina, who is a student psychologist who helps us organise events. And then there is the DIN core group who consists of students such as myself, Laura, Yaneki, Andreas and Emma. So we are the central members of the group. That is, we are the ones who organise events. We get in touch with people who are in disabilities and we encourage those with disabilities to contact us. And our purpose in general is to help guide them through the ins and outs of the universities, who to get in contact with, such as getting people in touch with the student counsellor because we are like any student organization as well, where you have people who are more experienced in the college to help students with particular interests, to help them get around. And that takes us to the next section of what exactly is a disability. And I know this sounds kind of redundant, but some people just sometimes don't understand what a disability is. It is basically a functional, functional impairment which, will lim which can limit and hinder your progress. So it is something that can kind of it holds you back in a way and it causes added stress and a hindrance to your overall development. It can be neurological in the nature, such as ADD, or attention deficit disorder or autism, or it could be physical in nature, such as having a, you know, having an injury, relying on a crutch, using a wheelchair. Um, and there are also other forms of disability, such as diseases, viruses, different disorders um, it, and on top of that even such things as depression or often people may not even realize they have a disability and this brings us to the next section of why DIN so what exactly are we for well as I said some people may not realize they have a disability or they may not have the connect contacts to get in touch with people who understand disabilities so what they can do is they can contact us and they can ask us questions and we can help support them inform them on what a disability is or guide them in a different direction. We also kind of function as and maybe it's no irony in the name, but uh, kind of a linked din of uh, disabilities of getting people in touch with other people who might have a similar disability and we can refer them on different directions to take. And more importantly, we provide social support for people with disabilities and we do this largely through our monthly lunches which we hold Thursday of every month, and my colleague will explain further. Thank you, Paul. So, uh, yes, as my colleague said, uh, we are um, organizing organizing uh, monthly lunches of Yatim because of uh, COVID, and uh, we cannot do it in prison time now. Uh, so it's every first Thursday of the month. And um, the, the main uh, thing is to talk with people, to socialize, to um, listen to other uh, people's challenges and uh, to, if you can advise them, give them some tip because uh, you might have the same disability or the same uh, challenges and go through the same uh, or similar um, challenges. And to improve our monthly lunches, we are inviting guests as well, um, such as the student psychologist, the student counselor, as uh, Paul already mentioned. We are really uh, working close with them uh, in order to facilitate the conversation and the discussion, because um, sometimes students uh, don't know that uh, they are here for them, that they can ask for facilities for having uh, extension uh, deadlines, for example, for the assignments or half an hour more uh, for the exams, having access to laptops uh, and so on and so on. And also to uh, just report them 
if they have like some uh, uh, ongoing problems, they can talk with a uh, student psychologist and have an appointment uh, even like once per week. So um, we are trying to um, involve more and more um, the student psychologists and student counselors and so on. And uh, we also present the disability network during our open day, uh, the, the open day of the university, to make sure that new students that are applying for university or that they're going to start university are, are aware, well aware of um, the uh, disability network, that they can uh, have uh, a supportive uh, and, and uh, a professional point of view as well from the student uh, psychologists and student counselors and to be sure that they can access to any kind of facilities that exist uh, in our university to make and facilitate the, the, their studies throughout the entire four years or, or the, entire, uh, the, the entire program. And another ongoing project is uh, we are trying to, uh, to reach with the ADHD, so uh, Attention Deficit Disorder with or without Hyperactivity Center of the Hague, uh, as well as the ASD, so the Autism Spectrum Disorder uh, Center of the Hague, uh, in order to um, improve the knowledge of students, lecturers, uh, managers of the entire university to make sure that, well, people know about what that is and how they can deal with that with their own life if they, if they do have ADSG or, or ASD. And um, as also Paul mentioned before, uh, it's not because um, I know, for example, that I have ADD, that um, some other people might have it, but they don't know that. So it is also like really important to to make sure that um, people are well aware of, of, of those kind of disabilities. But we are not only restricted to the ADHD center or ASD center. It's just like one of the two ongoing projects that we are uh, having now. And um, in order for all the students not to miss any kind of events that we are trying to uh, organize is um, the Dean Journal. The Dean Journal will be a, a newspaper uh, where students are outside from our uh, core group. So um, any kind of student who loves uh, writing can uh, write articles about the D uh, Dean, the Disability uh, Network, about our events that we are trying to, to organize. And uh, so that is also another ongoing uh, project. So they can send us uh, an email with the with um, our disability network email and as well uh, reach out with us on Facebook and Instagram. And there is another one, which is the ECIO competition that my colleague will further uh, discuss. Your mic, you need to put up your mic. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So, thank you, Laura. Um, so, ECIO, it is a competition on, called the Expert Centre on Inclusive Education, and they are an or organisation which have orchestrated an online competition for inclusiveness. And obviously, since our main overall goal is to encourage inclusiveness in the school, we have entered into their competition. And we have entered in as a group as a whole, as opposed to a single student, as we believe that it represents a lot of the students with disabilities in the college as one whole, as we hope it would. Um, and on a plus side, should we win the event, we, the university and DIN will receive a grant of 2,000 euros. So we are hoping that we have much success with that. And if should we win, we aim to encourage the fight against loneliness in general. And for this, we will move to the next slide. Yes, so overall our aim is about inclusiveness. And this naturally comes across as we need to tackle the problem of loneliness. And we, while, while anti-loneliness is the primary issue, we have also reached out to another group known as Anti-Loneliness. They are just a Facebook group with over 1,000 followers, and they agreed to help us out in our shared aim of, and they agreed to support us, so we hope to expand on this in future. And back onto the topic of anti-loneliness, it is now more topical than ever, 
I think I think the pandemic has made this topic more noticeable for everybody that loneliness has become a big problem in the world. But more particularly, it is a bigger problem for students with disabilities because already people could kind of view people with disabilities as maybe something of a burden. But now what has happened with the current situation with the pandemic is we've reduced our group numbers. So even when the people before who were being excluded are probably more excluded now, because first of all, if you can only invite three people, someone is going to be pushed out of the group. And secondly, the vulnerable group who are most in threat are more than likely disabled people or people with ongoing health problems. They would be members of our group. And even if you want to invite them out, you could potentially be putting them at risk. And then thirdly, even if they, they they might want to go out, they might not be excluded, but they might have to just avoid going out in the first place. So you've already, you just, in every way, they become the most isolated group in this situation. But in any case, this takes us to our next topic, which my colleague will talk about, of our common problems, because this is a common problem. I simply emphasize that it is a little bit more big of a problem for those with vulnerabilities. So take it away, Laura. Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, one of the common problems here nowadays during the pandemic time is that students or even lecturers might not have a proper uh, desk to study on or, or to teach on. And um, and we could see during the first uh, quarantine or the first uh, wave of COVID-19 that um, everyone was uh, not sure about whether going home or not because uh, it might also not last or it might last now we know <laughs> so it was like a really common problem of like okay so what do we do now okay now it's online um am i supposed to study on my bed or how am i uh, how can i adapt myself and we also have like as a common problem, like uh, an issue with motivation, because when you are in the same room every day alone and uh, not going out of your bed because the only way to study is on your bed or on the, the, the dinner table, uh, it is harder to get focused first and also to, to be motivated to continue and attend the classes. And um, just go a bit uh, with uh, with a specific problem to uh, disabled people uh, having ADD, for example, uh, which is also like the main issue with focus. How can 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 people deal with that? Like to motivate themselves, having the same routine every day, not going out, staying at home, uh, isolated, and and still trying to focus at best uh, for attending lectures, seminars, and, and keep track on everything. So that is also like a, a specific problem to people, not only ADD, but like, uh, I just like, as an example, yeah, emphasize on that. And um, so uh, one of the, the, the things we are trying to do with uh, uh, the disability network as well, is because uh, some people, some students cannot go home for Christmas. So we uh, will try to organize something, um, a Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner maybe. It can be like half uh, in present and half online in the sense that um, two or three uh, friends can be together and, and, and connect themselves on Teams and have uh, a lunch or dinner with more people. So that's what we are trying to organize as well because Christmas is still like a, a period that everyone wants to be uh, with someone and not to, to, to stay alone at their own place. So that's what we're trying to do. And uh, just going to the university response a little bit as well, it's, uh, we can also see how uh, the university are uh, involved and improved themselves during the, this pandemic time. Because at first, during the first wave, everything was closed. The entire university shut down. So uh, there were no access. Uh, to the library, no access to any rooms, so it was even like harder to have a proper um, place to study. And uh, now we can see that they open up a little bit, but uh, 
like with a certain limit, uh, limited amount of people, uh, you need to, if you want to have access to the library, you need to make a reservation, but it is still better and to, to have a place to go to in order to, to study. And uh, my colleague would further um, expand on that. Um, yes, well, you can probably see on the slides we have university response and followed by a lack of communication. I would just kind of like to point out that it's not all that downward slant. So I just like to start it out by saying that when the pandemic, the first lockdown did start, I thought it was quite good at the university that they had a crisis response team prepared. Um, I didn't expect them to have something like that that early into a crisis, so it was good. It was nice that they had all of that organised. However, just on the actual response in between the media and the medical establishments, the university and our LARC program was contacted directly um, by, I think it was the virology department of a local medical centre, and they were told to pay special attention to people with disabilities and vulnerabilities during the pandemic. And the media repeated this constantly, like a bit more, more focus on them. They're the vulnerable group. They're the ones in more in danger. When I, I would have thought with that mind, with that in mind and with the crisis response team present, that there would have been more communication to people with disabilities during that time, because um, I can kind of speak from personal experience just at, when the lockdown started, actually, I had to go into hospital and they had pulled back a lot of the medical services during during that time. And I, I found that we were in particular danger because of that. So it would have been nice to have more support from the university. I mean, I can't expect anything much of great from them on it, but, you know, like um, a thing saying, like, you know, we're here for you. Or, you know, you could organize something like particularly with the loneliness thing going on. We need to keep in touch with each other and know if we're OK. So it would have been nice to have more than that, particularly as the, the, the crisis response team was good to have, but they didn't acknowledge the vulnerable group. So that was a bit disheartening. Um, and this kind of goes into a general lack of communication. Now, as my colleague mentioned, there was some concern about, uh, you know, particularly foreign students being abroad and being unsure if they wanted to go home. There was, first of all, like overall, there was not, there was a lot of uncertainty. I mean, we have a law group of, I think, I think it's 190 students at the moment. And the, you would describe the atmosphere in that group during that period as one of panic and uncertainty. But there was just this overall, lack of communication coming down we were told like is, is the, we weren't sure if the university was going to close if we should stay if we should go home and um, so there would have been something nicer on that there was more communication coming through to us um laura mentioned um how it can upset people with adhd and we mentioned in the rehearsal that um the, it, particularly if you have a learning disability it can become very difficult to follow all these emails coming in so like a more direct route for communication would have been appreciated rather than like email after email. And also I believe there was a server glitch in that period where they sent out, I think like 50 emails in one day around that same period. That was a, that was very strange. And like we were getting notifications about exams from the last quarter. So it, it didn't exactly help with the confusion. Um, what else? Um, then we, yeah, so I think that covers most of our topic anyway, for with regards to communication. Anything else you want to add there, Laura? I don't. You cover every uh, everything. I feel like there's something on the tip of my tongue that's just gone and I can't remember. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We'll go on with it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, um, if I can just like uh, add like a little thing, it's just this is also why um, uh, the Disability Network tried to uh, get. Uh, more known well known like not only for uh disabled students but for everyone because it's like um a difficult time for 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 everyone and so if we can like do anything like still like uh, with our monthly lunches for example and try to organize some social events uh and try to keep track on that and and to motivate people if, if it's possible as well uh, to continue and attend their classes, their lectures, and and yes, so 
that's also what we are for. Thank you. Um. So thank you for your attention. And this is the end of the presentation. And if you uh, want to ask a personal question or several personal questions that you're too afraid of asking now, you can contact us uh, via email, uh, Instagram as well, and Facebook. And so no worries, everything will be treated confidentially. And if you have further questions that you can ask now, we are more than happy, actually, to answer those questions. So thank you. OK, thank you for your time on behalf of the Disability Network. I would like to thank you for being here. And as our slogan says, let's change. And we're, I hope I'm not being too negative in some of the things I'm saying. But, you know, once again, please, let's change. <laughs> Can, yeah, so uh, Christine, you want to go first? Yeah. No, you at your end first, so please <laughs> go. Okay. But well, I just first of all want to say you know, this is a really great initiative. Um, I hope I hope there's ways I can help this happen. Um, I think it's really important in a lot of different ways. First of all, you know, having community. Community is really important, um, and and community of people who who struggle in the same way is often really important as well. And uh, and also it's important to have critical mass. You know, enough people who suffer in similar ways, or it's not so much suffering, you know, cause I mean, I consider, I consider having ADD as, as a superpower, not a, not, not a, not, n you know, yes, it makes it difficult for me to uh, participate in certain things in society in the same way or in ways people expect me to. But, you know, when I, when I figure out, well, geez, it also, I, I can think faster and I mean, I think correctly, but I can think faster. I, I have all these different things that I'm interested in. I mean, it, it's just wonderful to have all, and here I am completely distracted and off on a tangent. And, you know, it, it's, but, but what's, imp what's important is to have other place, a place where people go and talk about their experiences, their common experiences. I think it's also important too, to, to, to take on, you know, with the help of the, of the, um, uh, of you know faculty that you're associated with and, and the student counselor kind of an, an ad, ad, advocative role a little bit because um, right now I, I see that the accommodations that we provide for students with various disabilities tend to be of one or two flavors you know either more time on the exam and or use of a computer uh, and you know, oftentimes I I think that's not the kind of accommodation that people need to be included and to be uh, and to feel like they're participating in the program. And so I think it's it's incumbent on on those of us who who operate differently to know the accommodations we need, right? So we all need to know what makes this work better for us, but we also need an exam board and and a system that will provide the right accommodations when we tell them what we need and uh, and not just give us more time and think that that solves everything because it doesn't. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, you know, and all the things that you guys mentioned, just, you know, the loneliness, the, but, but I think the, the, the every, you know, to help people know what accommodations they need and how to, and how to work with the exam board to make that approach better and more inclusive, I think would be a huge advocative role your organization could take. But, you know, I, just bringing people together and providing a social venue and a place for people to talk is critically important. Let me know how I can help. Thank you. Christine. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I, I think it's incredible what you're doing. I'm uh, flabbergasted. It's great. Um, uh, what I would like to propose to you, and it, when you talked about those uh, lunches, um, I would like if I if I would be invited to go and participate in one, because one of my question is, what can I do as a lecturer? Do you have tips for me, especially now with COVID, to to make my lectures of my seminars much more accessible for you? What can I do to help you, Laura? Or, um, you know, like getting your motivation in, you know, how can I f f facilitate that? Uh, any types of tips 
would be of training would would be very welcome. So I would join if if I am invited then to to come and have a discussion about that. Um, because of course I, I may understand that depending on the disability, maybe the answers of the tip might be different. So that was my first idea. My second one is about uh, the small discussion, Paul, we had at the beginning about the, the legal aspect of the whole question of disability in our uh, university. I, I, I would I love to have, I still need, now I'm thinking out loud, but to, to think how we could uh, tackle that, but to see if we can have one of those lunches of something else, like as a discussion on the legal mm -hmm. aspect. Um, that could help some of the students at maybe the university level or at the, the, the Dutch level or maybe internationally. So, uh, but uh, yeah, great initiative. It's uh, it's Thank amazing. You. Okay. Thank you. I'm 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 really glad to to hear actually that you're like both of you, Mr. Dahl and Mrs. Tremblay, that you are are actively. Uh, thinking about how to um, make it more accessible for everyone, etc., because it's not uh, a general thought, let's say, uh, to to uh, adapt the lectures, the seminars, and how to do that. And this is also why um, we wanted to organize uh, this ADHD and a um, ASD um, event in order to. Um, improve and increase knowledge about like what are those disabilities because it is also a good thing to because you cannot adapt yourself uh, or, or your seminars or your lectures if you don't know what that is first and this is also why i think it is super important to first know know if you have it or not because uh if you don't know that, for example, I can talk about myself, but I, if I didn't know I, I had like ADHD, I wouldn't know how my brain would work because it's a neurological disorder. So by knowing how my brain works, I can actually know how like the best way I can study. So uh, does is it like worth it for me to just listen for uh, two hours a seminar or is it actually better for me to do it like Okay, so 10 minutes I'm going to that topic and then I just have a break and then I go back. Or is it better to just like watch a video? So yeah, so everything like that uh, can help a lot. And also having like um, a discussion. I think like, um, well that now, for example, for my minor in year three, I am in alternative dispute resolution and I am fond of that minor because it's only discussion. It's so interactive. So I never lose the track on the uh, on the seminar and I am like my attention is still here because I have to talk so I think this is like also like a good way to to keep going to to keep the uh, the, the the focus I would say so yeah and Mr. Laurence you wanted to add something yes yes indeed uh, I think it's a great initiative of course uh, as I told you in some uh, message and as well uh, indeed it's really important to, to think about the in integral uh, aspect of, uh, of the whole program let's say so from the course from the means of communication from, from uh, as well networking uh, employment uh, all, all kind of information that we, we would need and to review them let's say and see how let's say it is the best way maybe to communicate or to give these uh, to all the students. Uh, if, uh, for example, as you say, it's better to have discussions or to have more, let's say, uh, live uh, interactions uh, after a class or a part of the class, for example, about it, or uh, as well the materials themselves. So the materials are, are they are really uh, all of them uh, well accessible. And uh, in terms of networking, obviously, uh, um, for all of you, you will have to do an internship remotely, but you will have to do it. And um, and it's really important as well to, to highlight uh, yeah this aspect for the employers uh, and uh, and whoever actually interacts with, uh, with the university and the students because it's good for you as well for your own network uh, if you want to connect with the organizations uh, and and uh, and, uh, and the regulations uh, at work uh, to make sure that indeed uh, uh, all the uh, employers they take into account as well that they might have employees. Uh, 
Uh, I think the United States is something like at every floor, there should be even a, a person who is able actually to, to, to take care of these questions as well. But uh, what I mean is that uh, first we have to start as university and, um, and uh, to make sure that uh, all of us, the colleagues and students, because I think students uh, who do not have any disabilities, they should as well help. Uh, they should as well uh, think about uh, sometimes is there a recording available or not, even if maybe there is no student with disability in the class. Uh, it should be always available to catch up and, and of course uh, uh, make sure that everybody is on, on the same uh, uh, level for studying. But uh, anything, of course, that we, which could be possible uh, to do. For example, um, would you accept uh, that there are more students from other programs? Because obviously, we are one of the big programs, but there are two other programs, like, instance, like IBMS, which have a lot of students, and I guess they don't know yet uh, the existence of your, of your, of your association. So, uh, so is it a possibility to to use, uh, of course, multiple events to invite? Oh, yeah, sure. Like our core group is uh, composed of five students and there are, if I am not mistaken, three different programs in our core group. So yeah, it's not only, uh, it's not only a low, uh, a low uh, association or a low organization because it concerns everyone. So this is also why uh, we are closely uh, working with the management of the university in itself and not only uh, from our program. Yes. And, and a very last question, um, because it has to be as well in Dutch language, huh? right? Uh, so yeah, that is why also in our like um, Facebook page, Instagram page as well, uh, everything is in both language. So it's in Dutch and in English. And, and this is also like what we saw because um, people with, uh, for example, um, dyslexia uh, have more difficulties to, to speak English if their mother tongue is Dutch. So this is why we're trying to, uh, to do both languages so at, at, the ten, uh, at the same time all the time. Yes. So yeah, university wide. Okay, thank yeah. you. And yeah, across from that, like in our group, we have members from marketing, uh, social care and law at the moment. And in general, because disabilities affect the entire area, we encourage we encourage anyone to join, not just people with disabilities. And if you know people with disabilities who may be hesitant to join, recommend them by all means. Yes, and if I may add to that also, it's not only for students, it's also for lecturers. For like uh, and like everyone uh, who whether have like a, a disability or not, just like as as Mrs. Trumbler said that she's really interesting in that. Well, uh, our monthly lunches uh, are the first Thursday of every month, so first Thursday is oh third of December. It's really soon, <laughs> so yeah, we can like uh, if you want to join, feel free. Um, just you can email me if you want or email uh, because. Our um, the manager of, of Dean is um, not working now, so and she is taking care of uh, the disability network, uh, the address, the email address. So if you want to to join us for the for our month lunch, um, please email either me or Paul. It would be a pleasure to have like uh, more people coming. Yeah. Yeah. On that one, we need to set up a uh, shared email account for ourselves anyway. I think it's going to be Gmail because um, we don't actually have access to the, the actual disability network email for the university. And if you if, if any of you have like another question, maybe from students, I don't know. Yes. So do, do you plan to organize events with external uh, speakers uh, as well? Yeah, the external, uh, external uh, yeah, that would be a DSG center of the Hague, that would be uh, ASB center of the Hague as well. And we are trying to, to get in touch uh, with them also maybe for uh, next year because now it's almost Christmas already. So yes, and also um, some um, professionals like our CEO or directors of some um, uh, so, yeah, to, just to to um, give the possibility and the opportunity for students and and um, with or without disability to talk with them, 
and to ensure their uh, place uh, for internship or in the working place uh, and to, to know how to adapt themselves with that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the last question, which is more on research, because of course, uh, as my colleague have mentioned, uh, it could be a topic on the legal side, uh, because I guess among the students in your association, you too will be the jurist, huh? will be the expert in law. So when there will be a question about uh, is it legal or not, they will ask you. Huh? So, but uh, yeah, more seriously, is it possible, for example, that uh, all kind of students get aware that there are probably some uh, topics which are very applied topics, let's say, which is connected to studies, to work, uh, etc. And employment law, for example, uh, or, uh, or labor law, sports law, etc., uh, health law, where indeed they could research on it. And uh, maybe that you could uh, highlight or publish, I don't know, in the future. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. Um, and yeah, we will um, I'll, we will talk about that with uh, the manager of, of the disability network. And of course, because I know that you talk about that, but as well, Mrs. Tremblay, so if you all are really willing to, to participate to that, we can always like uh, communicate via yeah, email to, to make sure that it, it will happen. So yeah. Great. And there is a there is a, a student question about um, that I have mentioned about the journal, the Dean Journal. Where can we read the articles? Okay, that is an ongoing project. So um, it is something that uh, we thought about and uh, that we are trying to 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 put in place. And we asked also uh, on our social media, so follow us on Facebook and and on Instagram, and we asked question to students to our like followers um if um how they want to proceed if they want us to uh communicate with them if they are willing by themselves to write the articles so this is like something that it is ongoing and because we don't want to um write the articles but like it's not that we don't want to write the articles by ourselves for the core group but it's way more interesting if all the students uh, write articles about Dean, about the disability network that would like uh, increase the the outreach as well and and the and the audience. So this is why we are trying to ask questions on Instagram and and Facebook. So if you want to see that happening, follow us. <laughs> and uh, just add on to that, maybe maybe it's an idea as well. I noticed that um, there is the Ilza Law Journal or for the law program. Perhaps if anyone wants to collaborate with us on it, we can join. You know, so yeah. that's an idea. Yeah. Another yeah, question. Is, yes, indeed, it's uh, something uh, I have to say to to talk with uh, Dr. Regas as well. Uh, because, uh, they are in the making of the journal, so I'm sure that it's possible to have a collaboration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they can also talk to me because I'm also oh, yeah, sorry. One of the guest editor, Mr. Laurent. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Yeah, and, and as, I, as I said, it's not only students that can write the articles, it can also be lecturers because that like, this way we will have like two point of view because uh, the, the point of view of teaching and the point of view of learning and studying, it's two, it, that two, it would be like uh, better to have an, an overview, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. an, an overall picture. So yeah, yeah everyone is, is, is inviting to write articles. And alumni as well, because we have former students who worked uh, in on that on this question uh one one who was speaking at the job fair last week and she was working at the paralympics and uh, she attended a lot of seminars actually uh, and she told me uh, uh, that it depends on which country but some ministries it's not you some ministries about help so, so uh, she said that she'll be happy as well to contribute uh, on this yeah yeah that would that would be amazing mm -hmm. uh, other questions from students, maybe? I don't know. Just for you to know, at this moment, this is on YouTube. This is Mr. Nifmas who is live streaming, but I don't know the question. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, one question maybe, but it's for me. Um, how would you like maybe to proceed uh, with uh, talking with the management? Would you like to have a meeting uh, to uh, to see how indeed uh, 
for the future, it could be possible to include uh, more feedback or, or more on, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, uh, awareness uh, on uh, one of great courses, for example. So how would you think you should go? Yeah, that would be amazing to have uh, meetings with them if it's possible. And also like, uh, and this is also why the disability network is really important because we are students. So we can uh, reach out with other students and, and have their immediate feedback because mm -hmm. uh, the managers don't necessarily know if something is wrong or not until they get feedback. So uh, this is also why it's uh, super important to, to have uh, those kind of uh -huh. meetings. And also, as uh, Mr. Dahl said, like sometimes just having 30 minutes extra of an exam is that it, it's not enough because I I know how I adapted myself. It's like I I have friends and I ask them, okay, so if there is a deadline, I need to know. Okay, please let me know because I will forget that. <laughs> so yeah, this is how I adapted myself. But uh, some people are more extra, which I uh, have like more. Uh, uh, um, uh, more issue of adapting themselves because of uh, of their disabilities. So that would be also uh, in need to have someone like a mentor or even their tutors for year one or year two to be okay next, not next to them, but just to say, okay, please don't forget, just as a kind reminder, there is a deadline on Thursday or on Friday at midnight. And, and just that would be amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, in the past, I remember the question was more on the recording. Uh, now yeah. we record almost everything. So to be honest, uh, this is maybe the COVID period which uh, had to change everybody suddenly. But uh, but now it is uh, indeed a uh, need to make sure that it's not just a question of recording. It's the entire class, exams, deadlines. Uh, yeah, rethinking the whole timeline, uh, whole year. Yeah, the recording, uh, I study based on the recording because uh, especially before COVID uh, when you are in a classroom and there is like more than 100 students talking and just like I, I could hear the conversation and I know their lives better than themselves now because I was trying but I was trying to focus on what the teachers were saying but I couldn't because I was like some noses like uh, around so um, I, I was like all my studies were based on the recordings because I would be alone in my room and really focus on what the, 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 the lecturer would say and, and to be sure because sometimes I don't even notice that, okay, well, I need to do laundry. Oh, no. Oh, and also it's really sunny outside. And then I, like half an hour afterwards, I'm like, oh, no, I need to listen to the lecture. And then I forget some things and, and did not write and, and didn't even like understand the concept that the, the she or, or he was talking about because I just like was thinking about doing my laundry. So, yeah, so this is why uh, uh, recordings are, are really helpful, especially for, for me. I cannot talk about everyone because ADD, ADHD uh, depends on everyone. Everyone has a different uh, a, a different way of dealing with that and have like different um, symptoms or, or, or focus and, and this is why I'm just like I take myself on, uh, as an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important to to, uh, to integrate for us, I mean, uh, create the content, uh, how it is perceived, how it is understood and how it is uh, useful for your studies, of course, uh, in general. So, uh, but indeed, uh, wherever it is this first uh, event online, there will be more, that's for sure, to make sure that uh, more colleagues as well can uh, join the discussion uh, when, uh, when it is uh, in this format as well. But, uh, but definitely, uh, uh, like maybe you saw the message of Dr. Linda at the beginning of this uh, session, uh, yes, you'll be happy to, to welcome uh, you, both of you, in delegation, I guess, online, uh, to, to see indeed how to improve. Uh, everything else as well yeah that would be amazing yes mm -hmm. other questions well I, I will be in touch uh, to set up a meeting to see when can i attend one of your lunches mm. right that it will be, be on i can say now that it will be on the the third of december be on the third of this month 
so just a Thursday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it will be it will also like if you cannot attend this one, you can like also be like the the next uh, first Thursday of so January. Yes, mm. I think it's more. I have uh, I think a whole afternoon of meetings this Thursday. Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. It, it's okay, but like we can that that was also something that uh, is like an ongoing project to try to reach out with um, one guest per lecture. So that would be amazing, yeah, to to have you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So and the following one in January would be on the seventh of January, Thursday. Uh, it, normally yes, it's uh, the first Thursday of the month, but if it's uh, during uh, a holiday, maybe we'll, it will be like the, the next one. We'll, we will keep in touch, yes. Okay, good. Uh, we can post it on the blog as well. Yes, yeah, that, that would be amazing. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Any other question uh, uh, on the chat? Uh, no, I don't see. It. Nice to hear more questions from students. Yeah. Possible. Uh, well, no. Maybe. <laughs> uh, no question, but since it would be good to um, to highlight your Facebook page. And yeah, uh, we 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 have a Facebook group, and thank you, Mr. Dahl, for joining. And we also um, have an Instagram page as well. Yeah. Okay. And you can find you can find uh, the details for that in this slide as well. But if you just if you if you're on Facebook, just write in Dis disability network. Um, and same thing for Instagram. Yeah. So, so if you're okay, I will share it as well with your programs, uh, your uh, Facebook and, uh, and Instagram. We have a question. So I. Try to to look at it. Okay, so how could I help if I, I was to join? Uh, what sort of events are planned for the future? Uh, well, by joining, you can either join the core groups or you can either join the um, the, the disability network. Um, the wider network. Uh, the, yeah, the our lunches, etc. And and for the future, so what what we said it was like um. We will uh, get in touch with you uh, when we organize the uh, ADHD uh, event. So with the ADHD Center of the Hague, as well as the um, ASD Center of the Hague. So by just joining and 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 uh, being aware and and promoting awareness, that would be amazing as well. But if you want to join the core group, then please uh, email the, the, the Dean address. Um, I'd, I'd also like to point out, like with regards to helping, when we get up and running again and things go back to normal, you can you can always help us with social events and you can always just communicate with people who have disabilities in general. I mean, it's polite anyway. Um, but at the moment, we have a be better emphasis on increasing our online activities. So. You could help out straight away by just I don't know liking, joining, or sharing the network. Um, if you would want to help promoting it, then again you can do that voluntarily, or you can email us and say you would like to join the core group, uh, and then we can give you more active roles. Because I imagine that you will have a board of first, and then you will have more members like uh, Isa as yes. Uh, as soon as yeah. it will to go, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, we have um, <clears throat> we have some tutors particularly involved with the psychological psychology and social end of the the board. Then mm -hmm. we have the core group, and the core group is usually consistent of students who are directly affected or have a disability, um, or perhaps know or are studying so sociology. Uh, the wider group are people who will join our lunches, join the network, join the events, and promote the group. We just want to basically there for the social aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be a great indeed. Uh, that uh, indeed the new members will have uh, uh, some more, let's say, concrete activities to help uh, the network uh, once we join. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Any further questions? Yes. Uh, it's, do you need more students in the core group or is your team complete? Well, there's um, also something. It's the core group uh, never remains the same. It's um, it's ongoing. It will be like for six months and then it will change again in order to uh, have new ideas, in order to, to um, let give the opportunity for everyone to speak up. So yeah, sure, you, if, if you are interested to, uh, in joining the core group, uh, please, as I said before, email the Disability Network uh, email address, and it will be uh, a pleasure to have um, more uh, members in the core group in order to help uh, with everything. Just to add, they, to add yeah, sorry, go, sorry. go ahead. Oh, no, just to add on to that, um, you can actually remain in the core group after your contract expires, but you just won't be under contract anymore. So you, you remain as a, as a main team planner, you're just not officially under contract. Yes, you can still get involved in all the, the organization and, and structure, etc. Um, and there is another question. Uh, is this network just for HHS or are you interested in attracting students of other university? Paul, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, that was one of our first concerns that uh, we that this is what I'm saying. I mean, it's um, it's a disability network. It's not just a school network. It's for anyone with a disability, really. I mean, obviously we're student driven, but we're all about expanding the network and getting in touch with other universities. We have some plans to reach out to Leiden University at the moment. Um, again, it's all kind of stalled because of the, the pandemic, so it was there's delays on it. Um, but we also reach out to members of the community. I mean, like, again, because of the pandemic, we're reliant on Facebook groups to do a lot of the work, but we've posted in things like expat communities and international communities. We would like more social support from Dutch people in the Netherlands because it's not, we're, we're an international course. So naturally all of our contacts are going to be in that international community. So it would be nice as well to reach out to regular Dutch people to come involved because it's not a matter of race or anything, you know, anyone can be disabled at any time. You're not, you're not immune to it, you know. <laughs> it shouldn't need to be said, but it sadly does. <laughs> Indeed, uh, I, I see that you have already uh, 99 uh, followers on your page. So, um, so certainly after this uh, session, there will be even more. Um, so yeah, uh, to, to, to for the second, uh, I would say your, your lunch in January, so be a lot uh, more as well. So, uh, so yeah, don't hesitate to let us know uh, each time you have a lunch, uh, some days in advance, let's say, within the week when it happens, let's say. Uh, so we can uh, share it as well, uh, not only on the Blackboard, but uh, as well the tutors, they can tell it uh, if some would like on the tutor groups. Yeah, we always like um, post um, some posts on Facebook and on um, Instagram in Dutch and in English to be sure that everyone can uh, can see it and also can see it and and also uh, because Instagram the Facebook and Instagram page is kind of new, so there's no uh, that many followers yet. So we usually also publish it in our private Facebook and private uh, Instagram to be sure they would reach like more people. Yeah, and uh, this yeah. has been an ongoing. <laughs> yeah, an ongoing problem with the Facebook group is that um, we're all very annoyed that Facebook keeps asking us for money to promote the page. Um, so we're not getting the full reach of our market in the first place. We we have members of our group, um, active members who are there for every meeting, and actually including myself. I and mean, we don't even get notified of our own Facebook group posting an event. And we get notifications from Facebook saying, uh, give us money and we'll promote your event, <laughs> basically. And it's been quite frustrating because it feels like it, it, we're being pushed down a little bit, you know, and I don't think that's particularly right for them to do, particularly during the current climate. <laughs> so this is why it would be amazing if you could like, um, like Mrs. Tremblay or Mr. Doll and Mr. Laurent, like, promote as well our event in, in in whatever and however just like please help us out and time for the students that are here like um 
talk about that, discuss about the disability network, try to look for, for us like me on Facebook and Instagram and, and share uh, our p uh, publication to be sure that it, it will be seen. And just to go for the uh, Mr. Doll comment about reach out to study coaches as well. Yes, we we also um, that is also like uh, one of our main concerns to to invite them as guests in our monthly lunches as well. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Doll. Any further questions? No. Yes, it was a very good presentation. Very comfortable, for sure. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank we'll you, and we keep in touch. With pleasure. Yes. Yeah, we'll reach out to you as the event is coming up and let you know what's going on. Mm. And so, like, if there's no further questions and we're all quite happy, I think we can call it a day. Wonderful. And thank, thank you, everyone. You. Bye Thank now. you. Thank you a lot. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.